Next is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is, ninth chapter, text number one, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on April 19th, 1976, in Melbourne, Australia. Bhagavad, the Supreme Being, Bhagavad. In your English dictionary, the word God is explained as the Supreme Being. <coughs> Supreme Being means who is great, greater or the greatest of all other beings. We are beings, we are individual persons. It is not very difficult to understand. Every one of us uh, individual. We think individually, we dress individually, we have got our uh, egotism, individual, everything. I don't agree with you, you don't agree with me. Voluntarily, sometimes we agree. That means every one of us has individuality. This is called being. I am. Similarly, God is also being, like us. Uh, but He is supreme being. That is the difference between God and me. I am also being, you are also being, but we are not supreme being. We are uh, under some control, uh, but uh, God is not under control. He is the controller, but He is never controlled. <coughs> Make it a bit louder. Uh, that is explained in the Vedic literature, the definition of God. The definition of God is given there, uh, Ishara Parama, the Supreme Being, uh, is Krishna, Ishara Parama Krishna, Satchidananda Vigra, and He is, Vigraha means He has form, He is person, Satchidananda Vigraha, but his person, his form is different from our form, our present form. Our present form, as we have got the, the material tabernacle, that is temporary. Your form, my form, this is changing. We are not existing in the same form. That's why you have got this form, human form of life. It is not permanently, as the baby can be asked. It's as we have got a particular dress now. It is not permanent. You can change your dress any moment. Similarly, this body, material body, is uh, considered the actual fact. Uh, <coughs> it will not endure. It will have to change. Therefore, it is not satchitananda vigra. But Krishna's form is satchitananda. He shut up Paramat Krishna, satchitananda vigra. Vigraha means form. Uh, so everyone has got form. Uh, the, there are eight million four hundred thousand forms of living entity. Uh, in the water, there are nine hundred thousand forms. Yalayanamalakhan, Khavara uh, Lokavinsati. Among the three plants, there are two million forms. Mm. <laughs> mm. 
Saw there are hundred and thousands of forms in the material world. But in the spiritual world, the form is Satchidananda Vigra. Every form is eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss. That is the difference between material world and spiritual world. Material world means, although the varieties are there in the spiritual world, there are also trees, as well as we have got here trees, but there the forms are spiritual form, and here they are material form. Material form and spiritual form, what is the difference? The difference is that it's like a living being. Uh, I can ask any of my disciples to do something, he'll do it. Uh, but this microphone, it has also a form. But if I want microphone, please do this. He cannot, it cannot do, because uh, it is material. Uh, it can mechanical, give some mechanical service, one only. But it cannot do any other thing. A man can speak, or he can dance, or he can become a thief, he can become so many, because he is living. That is the difference between material form and spiritual. Therefore, uh, <coughs> in the Bhagavad Gita, the material forms, they have been described as inferior. And spiritual form, uh, there is a uh, spiritual uh, world also, uh, that is called paraprakriti. There is another nature. So we have no information. But information means we have in the Vedic literature. Uh, in other literatures also there are slight information, but in the Vedic literature you will find described. Uh, information of the spiritual world. So Bhagavad Gita is the nutshell, cream of all spiritual knowledge. Here therefore Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, he is speaking. He is giving the spiritual knowledge directly. This is Bhagavan. So there cannot be any argument. The word used here, actually, this Bhagavad Gita is described by Vaisdev. So Vaisdev recorded in writing, otherwise it was being received through hearing. Before this Kaliju, Vaisdev, he kept all basic literature in writing. Before that there was no book. Uh, the knowledge was received through the ear, oral reception. Sruti, that's what is called Sruti. Sruti means the knowledge which is received by hearing. And the memory was very sharp. In those days, five thousand years ago, uh, any man, uh, not any man, but the intelligent class of man, they are called Brahmins, they used to receive knowledge from Guru by hearing. Uh, they could memorize everything, one's heart. Uh, in the Kalinjo, the memory is being reduced. The duration of life is being reduced. People's mercifulness is being reduced. This is the symptom of Kalinjula. Bodily strength is reduced. Therefore, Vaisdev preferred it that the Vedic knowledge should be kept recorded in writing. So he first of all then wrote all this Vedic knowledge into writing. 
the writings that are the four original Vedas, Sam, Joju, Deep, Asadva, uh, then the Upanishad, then the essence of Vedic knowledge, Vedanta Sutra, then Ramayana, Mahabharata, uh, Mahabharata is the greater history of this planet, Bharat, in this way, uh, immense literatures uh, are available. If we like, we can read them. We are presenting in English translation so many books. The purpose is people of the world may know the Vedic knowledge. The essence of Vedic knowledge is in Bhagavad Gita. Not only that, it is being spoken by the Supreme Personality of God. Uh, therefore it is said, the Bhagavan Vat. So nobody could argue. Uh, Vedic knowledge means uh, you cannot argue. Uh, you have to accept. Authority. Uh, just like the government uh, literature, government regulation, when it is published, gazette, uh, you cannot argue. Whatever the government has decided, you have to accept. Because government is the authority. Similarly, Vedic knowledge means you cannot argue. You can argue, uh, but that argument is not to defeat. That argument is for understanding. Tadvidhi pranipatena pariprasnena sevaya. If you cannot understand, then you have to put questions very humbly, pranipatena. Uh, not by challenging. Pranipat. Pranipat means very humbly, submitting oneself. Uh, pranipatena pariprasnena. Otherwise, there is no need of question. If you have no Pranipat. Pranipat means pratishta rupena nipatana, fully submiss. The answers, you should approach to a person questioning uh, with pranipat means you cannot challenge him. Whatever answer he gives, you must be prepared to accept. Otherwise don't put question. Uh, that is the system, basic system. Tadvidhi pranipatena pariprasneva. First of all, you cannot argue because it is a settled fact, vinirnitam. Just like some law is passed after much discussion in the legislative assembly. But when the law is passed, enacted, you cannot argue anymore. Under such and such law, uh, you have to do this section, then you cannot argue. Uh, similarly, Vedic knowledge, <coughs> it is nirnita, it is already established. Uh, simply, you have to know it submissively. If you are lacking the submissiveness, then don't put question. Uh, that will be simply waste of time. That is basic system. First of all, you should approach a person whom you think that he is the right person. He can give the answer. Then you put question. Uh, if you have doubt that this man may be or may not be able to answer my question, then don't put question. Uh, because you are not prepared to take his answer. Therefore, here it is saying, Bhagavan Vacho. You cannot put any question. Uh, that is the way. Uh, because Bhagavan means every word has got meaning. Bhaga means opulence. Uh, so one of the opulence is nobody is wiser than him. Vaisadyasa samakrasa bijasa jasa sasya. Yeah. Bhagavan means one who possesses six kinds of opulence. Richness, Vaishadyasa, uh, Samadhyasa, uh, Total, 
Wow, richness. Uh, you are rich, I am rich, he is rich, but nobody can claim that I am the only rich, or nobody is richer than me. That is not possible. But if you find somebody uh, who is the richest, nobody is richer than him, then he is God. Then he is God. God is not so cheap thing that in every street, every uh, village there is incarnation of God. Don't accept that. You must know what is meaning of God. Uh, at least we, followers of Krishna consciousness, we do not accept the chief God. Uh, the God's description is there in the Shastra. Uh, just like one of the descriptions is given in the Brahma Sanghita. Jasaika nishasita kalama thavalamba jivan piloma bilaja jagadandanatha vishnu mahan sayyadasya kalavi sayyadasya. Govindamadipurisam Nava. So, it is described here that the second is Sushita Kalama Thavalama. That is just like we are breathing, exhaling and inhaling. So, God is also being, we have already explained, so we are also being, we are breathing, He is also breathing. But our breathing, he is for a moment, but his duration of breathing is described in his Shastra. That uh, when he is exhaling, innumerable number of universes are coming out. And when he is inhaling, innumerable universes are going into him. Yasvaika nishasita kalama thavalamma, this breathing period, taking advantage of the breathing period of Mahavishnu. Millions of universes, Jagadanda Natha, uh, not only universes, the chief person of the universe, Brahma, they are coming and going, coming and going. And the Brahma's division of life, uh, that is described in the Bhagavad Gita, Sahasya Juga Padyantam Marhajyat Brahmanu. We cannot calculate even the uh, twelve hours day period uh, by our mathematical calculation. So that is meaning of God. And this God, Mahavishnu, is partial representation of Govinda. Vishnu Mahanusaya Jasya Kalavishis Govinda Vadipurusam Tamam. So <coughs> sometimes chief gods come as Western country. They cheat you. Uh, but God is not so cheap. Uh, this is one of the description of God. That uh, within the breathing period of God, Mahavishnu, who is not directly God, he is expansion of God, Mahavishnu. The uh, total material energy <coughs> is being created and annihilated. That is God. So, uh, this is one opulence. If we possess one house, we become very opulent. If another possesses two houses or three houses. Now here, in the breathing period of God, there are innumerable universes. You cannot calculate uh, what is opulence. Uh, one universe you cannot calculate. The one universe you are daily experiencing. Uh, what is the position of the sun? What is the position of the moon? What is the position of other planets? You cannot calculate. And there are innumerable universes. And that is depending on the breathing period of God. So we say God is great. We should try to understand how great He is. Not that they doctor frogs this name. No. That is not greatness. Now my calculation, God may be like this, God may be like that. You have to understand about God from the uh, authorized person who knows things as they are. Uh, then you can also know. Therefore, Krishna says here in the ninth chapter, Sri Bhagavan Vahasa, 
इदम टूटे गुह्य तम प्रवक्षामी और सूर्य भी मैं कह रहा जल आई सेल स्पीक टू यू इज गिवे सो मैनी इंस्ट्रक्शन बिकॉज अर्जुन है सबमिट है तो कृष्णा शिष्यस्त्रे हम साधु मांग प्रबंधम आई एम नाउ पार्टलेक्स आई एम देर फॉर सबमिटिंग माइ सेल्फ एंड यू कृष्णा वॉज इज फ्रेंड देर वॉज नो सबमिशन ए फ्रेंड डज नॉट सबमिट टू अनदर फ्रेंड देन देर इज नो मीनिंग ऑफ फ्रेंड्स बट हियर कृष्णा वॉलेंटरली अर्जुन वॉलेंटरली से दट आई एम सबमिटिंग डोंट ट्रीट मी एज मी एट एज योर फ्रेंड नाउ यू ट्रीट मी एज योर डिसाइब आई एम सबमिट सो देर फॉर कृष्ण से माइ डियर अर्जुन नाउ आई शैल स्पीक टू यू the most confidential part of knowledge uh, <coughs> is on to the guhyatam guhya means confidence uh, and there is comparative superlative uh, degree uh, that is guhya guhya kara and guhya kama uh, so krishna said i will speak to you the most confidential part of knowledge प्रवक्षामी प्रवक्षामी आई शैल एक्सप्लेन टू यू बक्षामी मीन्स आई विल स्पीक एंड प्र मीन्स प्रतिष्ट रूपे न वेरी एक्सप्लिसिटली आई शैल स्पीक टू यू वर्ड इज यूज हियर अनसूय भी ओसुआ मीन्स एनवियस एनवी आई एम स्पीकिंग टू यू Because you are not envious, uh, this is the qualification. If you are envious of God, uh, why? Who is God? I am God. Uh, why shall I hear from God? I know better than Him. These are enviousness. Uh, but Orjon is not envious. <coughs> <coughs> We are envious. This material world is enviousness. I am envious of you. You are envious of me. I cannot see you very opulent. You cannot see me very opulent. That is the reason there is uh, rivalry, competition in this world, man to man, friend to friend, uh, even uh, father and son. Uh, the competition is there. Because we are envious. Uh, suppose I am your neighbor, uh, and uh, I become rich. So, although there is no enmity, still my neighbor should be envious. So oh, this man has become so rich. I could not become. Uh, this is the nature. Uh, so, if we try to understand uh, Bhagavan. the supreme personality of god is the supreme being the our first qualification should be we should not be envious uh therefore in the simad bhagavatam in the beginning it is said that dharma prodhita koitava astra param nirmasanam nirmasa masrata means to become envious so that is one of the qualification Uh, to understand god not to become envious uh, but our enviousness is beginning from god uh, as soon as we present krishna as the supreme personality of god uh, so many persons will protest why krishna the supreme personality of god uh, then why not uh, first of all answer why not if you think that krishna is not the supreme personality of god head then you present who is the supreme personality of god i that you do not know or you cannot present uh, if you do not know who is the supreme personality of god head and take it from me krishna ah uh, and if you know then you present more than more efficient more expert more powerful more rich than krishna This is uh, practically a challenge. Uh, 
So actually, it has been challenged and it has been scrutinizedly examined, and the verdict is Ishara Paramakrishna Satchidananda Vidra. Anadi Radi Govinda. It has been decided. Nipon Nimnitam. It is already considered and decided. So any point, suppose Bhagavan means the supreme reach. Supreme being means everything supreme. Uh, in uh, richness, he is supreme. In bodily strength, he is supreme. In knowledge, he is supreme. In beauty, he is supreme. In renunciation, he is supreme. That is the description, definition of God. That he must be supreme in every respect. Therefore, he is called supreme being in the dictionary. Nobody can be rival to him. Asama urdha. Asama means equal. Hmm? Nobody is equal to him. If I become equal to him, how he can become supreme? Uh, if there is rivalry between the supreme, then there, there is not meaning of supreme. Supreme means there is no rival. Uh, he is the supreme means nobody is greater than him, nobody is equal to him. Everyone is under him. That is called supreme. Uh, asama urdha. Uh, nobody can be sama. Sama means equal. If I am God and another competitor God, you are also God, then neither you are God nor I am God. Uh, there cannot be any competition. Uh, that is called supreme. So, Arjuna is uh, to that position, he uh, does not challenge Krishna that there is another supreme being than yourself. Uh, there cannot be. But sometimes we foolishly challenge. Uh, that is our foolishness. But God is always supreme. Uh, so therefore, this is the qualification of understanding confidential knowledge about God. On a suya way. Prabhakshami asuya. Jnana. Jnana means knowledge. And vijnana means particular knowledge. Just uh, like in scientific uh, world, there are knowledge and scientific knowledge. Or uh, theoretical knowledge and experimental knowledge. Uh, two kinds of knowledge. Uh, <coughs> science in the field of scientific knowledge, there are things just like observation and experiment. Uh, things are going on, the scientists are observing, uh, these things is being done. Now there are so many observations, atomic observation, uh, proton, neutron, they are observing. And now when that observation is complete, when they are put into experimental knowledge, uh, that is called vijnana. So Krishna says that I shall explain to you jnana, theoretical knowledge, with practical experiment. Uh, not that you have to accept this knowledge blind, practical experiment. <coughs> Jnanam Priham Pravakshami Anusu Jnanam Vijnana Sahitam. Just like the controversies, the modern scientists, they say that uh, life is uh, generated from matter. Uh, we are protesting. We are protesting because uh, we are not scientists. Of course. But we are scientists so far our knowledge is concerned. Because here it is said, Krishna says, Jnanam Priham Savigyan. So Krishna is the authority, he is the opulent, most opulent, the wisest. So if we receive from him knowledge, then that is perfect. I may not be perfect. But the knowledge I received from Krishna, that is perfect. Uh, that is perfect. Uh, therefore, you should receive from Krishna knowledge. That is perfect knowledge. Uh, a, a small child, he does not know 
uh, what is this what? Uh, the father explains to him, my dear child, this is called what? It is moving by this machine, and as far as the child can understand, it is explained. So when the child says, this is what? And it is working like this. I have heard it from my father. That is perfect now. That is perfect. He may be imperfect, but his knowledge is perfect because he has received the knowledge from the perfect person. Ah. This is a crude example. Similarly, any knowledge you receive from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, ah, it is perfect. Therefore, Krishna said that <coughs> Idam to the Guya Tamam Prabhakshami on a Suya Vi Gana Vigana Saitam Jajgatya and if you learn this knowledge, if you actually assimilate this knowledge, Jajgatva, Moksha se Asuva, then you become liberated from this inauspicious life. Asuva. Subha means auspicious. And uh, asubha means inauspicious. So our this material existence is inauspicious because we are full of ignorance, full of miserable condition, and this body is not permanent. Our existence, body should have been like Krishna because Krishna is the original father. The, the son's body is as good as the father's body. But when we learn from the Shastra that Ishara Parma Krishna Satchidananda Vigra, his form is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. And when we compare <coughs> how are this body, material body, it is neither eternal, neither full of knowledge, neither full of bliss. That this is asubha. The asubha means it is not subha. If his body would have been auspicious, then this body would uh, uh, continue to exist because we are eternal. These things have been described very vividly in the second chapter. Naharnate hanamane sarire. Because you are dull brain, uh, there is no education actually. Uh, uh, the modern education means simply uh, craftsmanship. If you can prepare a nice motor car, uh, that is advancement of it. So what is this? This is craftsmanship. It is the blacksmith's work. It is not knowledge. Knowledge is different. Therefore, it is called jnanam vijnana sahita. This is knowledge. What I am and this body are something else. Why I am suffering? If there is any Remedy. I do not wish to die. Neither I am subjected to death. Nitya, sasatya, nahannatya. This is knowledge. If I am eternal, if I do not die after annihilation of this body, then why I am subjected to this body? This is knowledge. Uh, to manufacture a motor car, uh, that is not knowledge. That is craftsmanship. Knowledge is here. Uh, that I am eternal. Uh, why I am put into this condition of temporary body, not only uh, one kind of body, but there are eight million and uh, four hundred thousand different forms of body, and I have to accept one of them. Tathadehantara prapti, according to my karma, this is my position. How to get out of it? Uh, to inquire about it, if there is any science, to accept it, that is knowledge. Therefore, Krishna says, jnanam sabhigyanam, vigyana sahitam jajyatta. If you are fortunate enough to understand this knowledge, then moksha say you become liberated from this inauspicious condition of repeated birth, death, ignorance, and suffering, so many things. So, we can try to explain one after that. This is the beginning. Thank you very much. Yeah.
awareness or spiritual soul of a, an animal or bird, how that enters into a human being. How does the spirit soul of a beast enter into the form of a human being? Just like a thief in the prison house, how he becomes liberated. When his time of suffering in the prison house is finished, then he is again free man. And again he is, again if he is criminal, he is put into jail. So, human form of life is meant for understanding, as I have explained, the, what is the problem of my life. I do not wish to die. I am put to death. I do not wish to become old man. I am obliged to become old man. Janma me tu jara badi, dukkha do shama do So, he just like the same example, a thief, when he is free, if he uh, thinks upon uh, us, that why I was put into this miserable condition of six months prison life, it was so uh, bothersome. Then he becomes actually human being. Uh, so similarly, the human being has got advance and power of deliberation if he thinks that why I am put into this miserable condition. Uh, everyone has to admit that he is in miserable condition. He is trying to become happy, but there is no happiness. So how that happiness can be achieved, that chance is in the human being. But if we receive by the mercy of the material nature a human being and we do not utilize it, properly, if he, uh, uh, he misuses this uh, benediction as cats and dogs and other animals, then you have to accept again the animal form. And when the time is finished, it takes long, long duration of time because there is evolutionary process. Uh, so again he will come to this human form. When the time is finished, exactly the same example, a plea, when he has finished his term of imprisonment, he is again a free man. But again he commits criminality, again he goes to jail. So there is cycle of birth and death. If we utilize our human form of life properly, then we stop the cycle of birth and death. And if we do not use this human form of life properly, again he goes to the cycle of birth. That will depend on his work. Karmana Dhyuna Trena Janta Deha Kupati. According to the association of the material nature, you get the next body. Karanam Gunasanga as such, Sadasat Janma Juni. We have got different types of bodies that is due to our association, past association, with the different modes of material nature. Therefore, in this life, if we associate with the modes of goodness, then there is a possibility of being promoted to the higher planetary system. Or if we become God conscious, then we go back to home, back to God. This chance is there. Now it is up to us to utilize it properly. That is already explained. According to la past karma, you get different position. Sadasad janma junsu. Sad or sad. Abominable life and pleasing life. That is due to our past association with different modes of material. That is lucky or unlucky. That means according to our past association. Just like if you, in this life also, if you are properly educated, then you get good position in the uh, society. 
say may say lucky or lucky position but the lucky position was due to your uh, personal association uh, of being educated it depends on you to get this lucky or unlucky position and this same law is working uh, law is one just that you infect some disease you must suffer from the disease there is no excuse because you are children your child nature will not excuse they if the child touches fire the fire will not excuse it will burn similarly as soon as you put yourself under the control of the material nature then according to your association you have to accept the result there is no question of child or elderly person Don't put any question no. from any particular. Try to understand the philosopher. He two plus two equal to four. He that does matter whether he is a Christian or Hindu or Muslim. Two plus two equal to four everywhere. Uh, well, In Christianity, this is my body and this is my blood. And, um, this is my blood. You are not blood. That is all right. This is my blood. You can say, yes. just like I say, this is my body, but you are not this body. If I say this, my my microphone, does it mean I am microphone? Why do you put this question? So that is to be understood. You can say my blood. And you don't say I blood. <laughs> that is foolishness. Yeah, I didn't say I blood. That you say my blood. Therefore, the blood is different from you. As soon as I say my blood, then my house, the house is different from you. The point is, is that it makes it one. It makes body and soul one. And then say, this is my body and this is my blood. No. So it is. It, it requires little intelligence. Just like uh, you are breathing, so when the breathing is stopped, you say the man is dead. But what is this breathing? This breathing is nothing but a little portion of air passing. So you can artificially make that arrangement. They are passing, but does it mean that it will bring life? So therefore, breathing is not life. Life is different from breathing. You have to study scientifically because breathing can be produced. Ah, uh, the is respiration. Ah, uh, uh, even in the what is called bellow, there is breathing. Oh, song, oh, song. <laughs> Does it mean life? No. Therefore, you have to study every part of your body. You will find there is no life. So therefore, life is different from this combination of matter. This is intelligence. Then, as you understand it, uh, first of all, you understand this: that you are different from your body. Analyze your body, part by part. Then you come to understand. Don't jump over. Okay. Your question was: the body is not different from the life. That was his question. So it is different. You analyze this body. You find. In every part of body, take this, and you study it. You'll find no living force there. So how you, how the living force is equal or identical with the body? All right. Thank you. Right? Then you agree. Then you accept that the soul is different from the body. Well, I understand. So you call that Krishna. But God is God. God's name is God, not Krishna. You may call it Krishna if you want. So who is God? God is God. Who is that? You do not know. You do not know. God is God, you say. Man is man. But who is that man? You do not know. Maybe I'll just put a thing that is the device is position of the three four seven three um spirit, soul and body. 
Divine from you. What, what is the concept, not really. mm-hmm. I, think, I think we also have to misunderstand it. is not saying that each individual soul is God. That's what I'm talking about. Now, God is a word. He 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 is a I am not this body. All right, I can understand. Then, then other things will follow. All right. Hmm. Furthermore, I have another question. Uh, it is actually a statement that comes from the Bible, which this one is part of the I'm not really focused, but uh, there's a thing more that says, I am all of thy God, but I am not meant in my you know, standing here. That is a statement of the Supreme Lord. And thou shalt have no strange gods before me. You must not make idols or images to bow to or worship in any other way. You may worship no other god than me. Well, then how will you get that? But that is not any other way. You have to worship God. I have to worship God. There where is any other way. Worshiping God is here, either you or in me. Where is other? There is no defense. The worship of God is there. I worship God, you worship God. You follow Bible, I follow Bhagavad Gita. But the worship of God is there. There is a difference. Why do you make difference? Well, I eat, you eat. Eating is there. So in your country, you eat in different way, I eat in different way. But eating must be there. Similarly, worship of God must be there. Either you worship through Bible or Bhagavad Gita. But worship of God must be there. That is not. Yeah. Then, then finish. Well, there, there is no question of detail. Just like here we are hundreds of men. We are definitely dressed. But that does not mean that we are not human beings. No, yeah, so then there is no question. When there is worship of God is there, either in the Bible or in Bhagavad Gita, then there is no controversy. Yeah. So if this is a new religion in the world, which may come, you know, so if this is that happens, then the... It is not new religion. Why you take it new? We say worship of God. Uh, well, that is not new. That is very, very old. All right. Well, why I'm saying it is because it is new to a lot of people who have been brought out. That is up to you. You may accept or not accept. There are different kinds of dresses. Yeah. In the shop, why you have accepted this kind of dress? But you must be dressed. That is what you may make your choice in a different way uh, than myself. But you must be dressed as a gentleman. Similarly, worship of God must be there. Either you do it in Christian way or Hindu way. That doesn't matter. All right. Well, then, does that mean that you assume or propose that? The world will all become one in one religion. Yes, God is one, and if you worship God, then it is one. All right, but then men differ in different. Differ that that I've already explained. That there there are so many dresses. You have got a particular dress. You like it, but that does not mean that you are not dressed. Yes, you know, I but the point that I'm trying to make is that you call God Krishna, Christians call God by whatever name they call God. <laughs> Christian, Christian, have, I don't think they have any particular name of God. All right. Then, if you, if you yeah, get, suppose you have heard the name of the, there is a president. But if you hear from somebody, the president's name is this, the what is the heart? You become advanced in knowledge. Eh? Suppose you go to a country, you know that that government has got a president. But if somebody says the president's name is this, then what is the wrong there? Nothing wrong. 
then you do not know the name of God, and if I give you the name of God, what is wrong there? Yes, one God is that, but you do not know what is his name. That is the reason. I know, right? But you say, what is that name? You say me. No, no suggestion. God's name cannot be suggested. Then he is not God. God's name cannot be suggested. Then he is not God. You cannot suggest God's name. Well, God is person, I have already said. It is they described in the uh, uh, dictionary. The supreme being. You are being, I am being. But he is the supreme being. You are not supreme. I am not supreme. Yes. One. Supreme means one. Otherwise there is no meaning of supreme. If there is equal, then there is one. That's all right. Now, child. Yeah. 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 Yeah.